So I recently had a client request for something that I thought was going to be fairly complicated, but it ended up being a really easy fix. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you'll see as I scroll down the page here, all of these logos are moving left and right, these ones in opposite directions here, and as I scroll back up, they go the other way. But it doesn't have to be just logos. You can see here I have these images of watches which are moving from right to left as I scroll down the page and back to the right as I scroll up. All of this is done with a pretty simple CSS animation, which means we're not having to add any JavaScript to the page in order to do something like this. It's really simple to set up, so let's go ahead and build this out from scratch. Now, in order for you to really see this effect, you do need quite a bit of content on the page because you need to be able to scroll both above and below it. So I've gone ahead and just brought in a hero section here as well as these two content sections, and we're just gonna put our little logo slider in between these two. So to do that, I'm just gonna start by adding a container to the bottom of our page, and we'll press the up arrow just to get it positioned in between these two content pieces. Now let's go ahead and rename this here just so it's easier when I point out certain pieces or sections here. We're just gonna call this slider section. We'll go ahead and save that. And here under our settings, we're gonna change this tag name from div to section as well. Now inside of that, we need another container that's gonna house all of our images. You could use an inner container here, but that would restrict your images to the content with your website, like the edge of these cards here. And what I want is actually for it to go to the entire width of the website. So instead, I'm just gonna click on the plus button here and add a new container inside of our slider section. We'll go ahead and rename that as well. And we'll call this image wrapper and hit save. Now inside of our image wrapper, we're gonna put all of our images in here. So I'll start by using a generate blocks image and we'll go into our media library where I already have all these images uploaded. Now we just need to repeat that process of adding all these images one at a time. I'll go ahead and speed through this so you don't have to watch me do it and we'll pick things back up once I've added all the images here. So now you can see I've gotten all my images added here, but they don't quite take up the full width of my website like I was hoping. In that case, you either need to make the images bigger or add more of them. Now, I don't want them to be too big here, so I think what I'm gonna do is take the easy way out. I'm gonna grab all these images and I'm gonna duplicate them just so I have double of each one of these logos here, which we can see now is more than spanning the width of our website and going on and stacking into two lines. So the next thing we wanna do is make sure we have our image wrapper selected. We're gonna go over here to our styles panel and under layout, we're gonna change this display from default to flex, which is gonna put them all in a line together. Now you can see these images are being cropped and they don't have any gap between them. So we need to take care of these things as well. Here under the flex layout, we can change this column gap to something like 60 pixels, which will put a nice gap in between all of them. And we wanna make sure we set this flex wrap to no wrap. That's just gonna make sure that they don't somehow end up wrapping and going on two lines here. So if we set to no wrap, it's just gonna go off the edge of the canvas here. Now, as far as these images being cropped, this is actually something Generate Blocks is doing. If I select all of my images here and we go under media, we can see the object fit is set to cover, which is great if you're doing a background image, but not so great if you don't wanna get these cropped. So I'm gonna change this from cover to default, which will just make sure that none of these images get accidentally cropped. If we went ahead and save this right now and took a look on the front end, you can see we have this horizontal scroll problem because our content is much wider than our width here. So to fix that, we'll go back into the editor. We'll go to our slider section and under position, we're gonna change this overflow X to clip. By doing that, we're actually stopping the overflow from left to right here, which will just make sure that these images are cut off on the edge of our screen instead of going outside of their container. Now at this point, this is all we can really do using the controls inside Generate Blocks. The rest we're gonna need to do with just a little bit of CSS. But in order to target the right thing, we're gonna have to go back into the editor here, into our image wrapper, and we're gonna have to give this a class. So back into our settings under advanced, we'll just call this image hyphen slider. We'll go ahead and save that, go back to the front end and we can jump in the customizer. From here, we'll go into our additional CSS and we can target our image hyphen slider by just typing period image hyphen slider and then opening and closing our curly brackets. We'll go ahead and scroll down this page so we can see what we're working on here. And the first thing we need to do is do an animation. Now we can name this animation anything we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it slide. And then we wanna set the timing function to linear. 
Next, we need to tell this that we want this animation to be controlled by our scroll position on the screen. To do that, we're gonna type in animation hyphen timeline. We'll type in the word scroll and then open and close parentheses here. And this will just set up everything to be able to animate this based on the scroll. The next thing we need to do is set up our keyframe animation. So we're gonna type in at and then the word keyframes. And then we need to reference the name of our animation, which we can see that we called slide up here in our animation. From there, we can open and close our curly brackets. And the only thing we need to write in this animation is the to position. So we're gonna start where it starts just by default, and we're just gonna animate to something else. So here we can just write the word to and then open and close our curly brackets. Essentially, all we're gonna be doing is moving this container from the right to the left. So to do that, we do a transform. So we'll write in the word transform and then our colon. Now we're gonna be translating this on the X axis, which is the left and right. And we need to give it some kind of value here. I'm gonna start with 20%, which is just a good starting place for what I've set up here. And now we can see as we scroll up and down, these images are moving from the left to the right or the right to the left, depending on which direction we're scrolling. Now, as far as the speed at which they're animating, that really has to do with how much we're translating them. If I change this to 100% here, we can see as I scroll up and down, they move quite a bit quicker than they did before. Of course, we do get to this point here where we've run out of images, so there's kind of a blank space. That might not be a problem depending on your design, but in this case, I think that's a little bit too fast. I'd like to go with something a little bit more subtle, and I think the 20% actually did a pretty good job here. And let's talk about some of the ways we can make this layout even more interesting. One thing I really liked about this original one that I showed you is how it's kind of fading off at the edges. I think this just gives a nice effect instead of being so abrupt there at the end, it's a nice little fade out effect. This we're gonna need to do with CSS as well. So let's go ahead and jump back into the editor here. In this case, we need to actually target our slider section. So I'm gonna click on that and here, we'll just call this slider hyphen section. We'll go ahead and save this. We'll jump back into the customizer here and go ahead and refresh it. Go into our additional CSS and we can target our slider hyphen section. Now what we're gonna wanna do here is mask off the edge of this with a gradient essentially. We want this to be completely invisible over here at the edge and then slowly fade into being a 100% opacity. And we can actually do this through a mask image effect. Now this is a little bit hard to just envision in your mind. So to do this, I'm gonna actually go in here and search for CSS gradient generator. And if we go into this first result here, we can kind of visually build out what we're looking for. Here you can see this nice gradient. Let's go ahead and reposition this maybe around here. At this point, we're gonna want this to be completely invisible. And then we're gonna want it to fade in between here and then become fully visible here. We can see this little 12 and 13 that's changing. That's our percentage for the stop. So maybe we go with something like 10. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna click in here to add another stop and we're gonna change this one to 90 so it matches our 10% off from the edge on either side. Now we can see down here, it's given us a linear gradient, which is exactly what we need. I'm not concerned about the colors. We're gonna change that once we get it back into the customizer. So let's go ahead and just grab this CSS here and copy it, and we'll jump back into the customizer here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in, and you can see now we're getting that background gradient just like we had inside the generator. We just need to make a few tweaks to it. Now it's a little bit backwards from how you're thinking, but what we need to do on this first stop here, this first color, which came in as RGB, we need to change that to transparent. So now you can see that's just kind of transparent on the edge. We also need to go into our last stop here, which we can find in this last bit of the declaration where it has our RGB color, and we're gonna change this to transparent as well. So now we can see it's kind of fading out on the edges. The colors in the middle, which is our stop here at 10 and our stop over here at 90. I'm just gonna change those from the color that came in to just a solid black by doing hashtag 000, and that'll just make sure that it's black there in the middle. Now, instead of a background gradient, what we actually want is a mask hyphen image, and this is just gonna mask off this section so you can see now it's fading a little bit on these edges. Now this 10% amount that I chose might not be quite enough. As you can see, it's fading all the way in about here. I think we need to go a little bit further. So here where we have this 10%, let's change this to 20. 
And here where we had 90%, we'll change this to 80, and that will just bring in that fade effect a little bit further. You can see if we change this to something like 60 and 40, it's fading in quite a bit more, and only this middle like 20% is fully opaque. So this really just depends on your design preference here. I think I'm gonna take this back to 20 and 80. I just want these to match, so this one's 20% away from the end and this one's 20% away from the beginning. So they just fade out evenly on either side. And with that, we've added this little fade that I really think makes this look quite a bit better. Now let's set this up where we have two different rows of images like I did in my demo, where one is going one direction and the other is going the other direction. We'll go ahead and make sure our changes are saved here and we'll jump back into the editor. And here in our image wrapper, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that entire wrapper here. So now we have two lines of these images. Now they're a little bit too close to each other. So I'm gonna go back to our slider section. We'll change this display to flex. We'll make sure it's set to columns so they're stacked on top of one another. And we'll do something like 40 pixels a gap just to space these out a bit. Now, there are some cool ways you can combine this CSS, but it makes it a little bit harder to explain. So instead, I'm just gonna go here into our additional CSS classes, and I'm gonna change this class from image slider to image slider hyphen reverse, just to make sure we're being really explicit about the rules we're setting here. With that, we'll go ahead and hit save. We'll go back into the customizer and refresh this. Back into our additional CSS, we'll grab all of this CSS we wrote for our animation earlier and go ahead and copy it to our clipboard. Now let's scroll down to where we can see what we're working on. This top one is still animating, but the bottom one, since we've changed the class, isn't anymore. And we'll go ahead and paste this in. And instead of having image slider, we'll do image slider hyphen reverse. Now we can see they're both moving, but they're moving in the same direction, which isn't exactly what we wanted. To change that, all we need to do is change the name of our animation. So we're just gonna call this slide reverse. We'll go in here and change the name of this animation to match, adding the reverse at the end of it. And then we'll change this translate percentage from a negative 20% to a positive 20%. Just like that, we can see these are now moving in two opposite directions. Like I said a moment ago, there's a way we can combine some of the CSS to write a little bit less, but it does make it a little bit more confusing to follow along, so I've decided to just write it out this way. Now, the problem we're having here is we can see the edge of this one on the left, but that's a pretty easy fix as well. We'll go ahead and publish these changes and jump back into the editor. And here for this second image wrapper, the bottom one, I'm gonna go into our style settings here into layout, under alignment, I'm gonna make sure that this is justify content flex end, which this is gonna align all these images to the right hand side instead of the left. If we go ahead and save that now, and we go view it on the front end, we can see that now we're not running out of the space for those images, and both of these are animating in different directions. Now, of course, here we did logos, but just like I showed you in the little example earlier, it doesn't have to be logos. You could have full images here and do some kind of gallery that animates as you scroll as well. Now, there's one more thing I want to address before we wrap this video up, and that's accessibility. Anytime you have something animating or moving around on the screen, there's always some kind of accessibility concern. However, in this case, I think it's a pretty simple fix. So what we're gonna do is go back to the top of our CSS here. We'll just do a couple returns to give us a little bit of room. And we're gonna wrap everything we wrote inside of a prefers reduce motion media query. This will just make sure that anybody who has their browser set to prefers reduced motion won't see this animation effect, but everybody who doesn't have that setting set will see exactly what we created here. To do that, I'm just gonna type in at media. We'll open and close our parentheses. And inside of that, we're gonna write the word prefers reduced motion colon no hyphen preference. Now we'll open our curly brackets here and then we'll make sure to go to the bottom of all of our animation and close those. And essentially what we've done is wrap all of this animation inside of this prefers reduced motion media query. So anybody who has prefers reduced motion set will just see our page like this, which is totally fine. But anybody who doesn't mind the animation will get to see the full effect here. Now you can see when I removed all of this, I actually had that little fade out effect inside this media query as well. You might wanna go ahead and take that bit of CSS and just stick it outside of that media query. So that way, if somebody does have the reduced motion on, they still have the fade out effect here, which is nice. They just don't have the animation anymore. 
Like with any kind of effect, you wanna use this sparingly and tastefully. Anytime you animate too many things on the website, it can be distracting from the actual goal of the website, which is converting visitors. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.